Hey guys, Ryan with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana. And normally I stay in my PWCC lane because that's the auction interface that I'm familiar with. But today I'm going to bring you a preview of every single Michael Jordan card that is listed in the upcoming monstrous, massive, impressive uh, golden auctions 2022 September Elite Sports Auction. Uh, this is an auction with a bunch of monsters in it. I am specifically going to stick with the Jordan cards. Uh, here's the info you need down here that I've highlighted. Uh, this auction, as you can see with the running clock on the screen right behind my fat face, starts in nine hours. I'm not sure. I'm going to upload this pretty soon, probably today. So it will probably have just started. As of right now, there are no bids, so there's no way to sort it in order of highest bid or lowest bid or any of that. But we're going to go through, I think it's 63, not coincidentally, uh, Jordan items listed in this auction. But uh, starts uh, August 25th, today, that is a Thursday, and ends, as you can see, on Saturday, September. 10th at 9 p.m. That's when the extended bidding starts and that's when uh, the uh, the bidding gets rambunctious and uh, there's a bunch of monkey business and all uh, all heck breaks loose as people furiously try to make sure they get the cards that they wanted out of this auction. Uh, this is one absolutely loaded auction. Let's just get cranking. There's no easy way to do this. Um, I've got it pulled up here on your screen and as I said, as you can see over here, there are 63 Michael Jordan cards. Uh, the first card is the card du jour. It is the card that has uh, been talked about probably the most over the last 30 days since PSA decided to start grading these dang things. It's the 1984 star number 101. This is the very first ever uh, mint PSA 9 copy. I got wind of this a couple of uh, days ago that this was uh, recently graded and it was the first PSA 9 copy. Kudos to the seller, uh, understanding the market and the irrational, um, illogic nature of, uh, you know, frenzied bidders. Uh, listing this card right away is the absolute best thing he can do, in my opinion. Uh, sell the Pop 1 PSA 9 before it's a Pop 14 or Pop 25 PSA 9, which it will be one day, despite what everybody says. So uh, here it is. It is an absolutely gorgeous, incredible. This might be the most perfectly centered uh, PSA. I shouldn't say perfectly centered. It's probably the most well-centered PSA um, copy that I've seen thus far. There hadn't been a lot of them out there with all the eights, but this nine looks exceptional from a centering standpoint. I'm not going to get into too much into details. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, surmise in the comments exactly what you think it's going to sell for. Uh, I think it's going to sell for a monstrous number. I just think it's going to be worth about one-fifth as much in about one year. So uh, this is a card that I will stay very, very, very far away from. Uh, would be bidders, you're, uh, you're safe from Cajun Cardboard. I will not be partaking in that one. Uh, to our right, we have another exceptional card. Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe, the three most collectible people in the hobby. Sign of the Times, Triple Auto. Another badass auto here. Uh, these are probably the biggest torchbearers of the last 50 years in the hobby. Uh, missing only LeBron. You've got Bird Magic. You've got Dr. J, who they took the mantle from pretty much. And then you've got... Uh, Michael Jeffrey Jordan himself. Just to the right of that, you got Bird Magic Jordan again. So if you're an autograph lover, a triple or quad or a dual autograph lover, this golden auction uh, has many of those types of autographs featuring MJ. So you're going to be in heaven when you scroll through these listings. Uh, the first card we're going to look up on card ladder is going to be this Thunder and Lightning BGS 9. So uh, I know BGS 9 doesn't really uh, ring you know, ring a big bell in the in the minds of ultra modern collectors. But if you guys are familiar with this Thunder and Lightning uh, card from 97 Skybox Premium, you guys know how rare it is. It's a pop 18 in BGS 9. Uh, here's what's happened over the last two years with this card. Two sales. Uh, right at 3,000, right at 3,000. So that's kind of what you're looking at for the value of that card. But just to show you kind of how rare it is, there's nine PSA 9s and there's one. 16 PSA 10s. The last PSA 10 sold for $36,000. So I don't know about you guys, and that might have been a reach, right? It was only a couple months ago. Uh, that might have been a huge reach, but even if it wasn't a huge reach, let's say it's a $25,000 card. Um, the BGS 9 is around $3,000. That is a pretty large multiple uh, considering uh, the PSA 10 is a $36,000 sale. So uh, BGS 9 at $3,000 looks like a pretty good long-term investment, right? Some people want to just get the, the thunder and lighting and keep it in the collection. But like from an investment perspective, 
That does that just seems like too many multiples. I mean, 12x between the BGS9 and the PSA 10 seems like a big number. Maybe I'm crazy. Uh, right next to it, we've got a card that's near and dear to my heart. I recently picked up a PSA 10 copy of this very same Michael Jordan insert from Skybox Premium. Same uh, exact set as the Thunder and Lightning. This is the premium player insert. Beautiful card uh, featuring Jordan getting a jumper off over a really good player from the uh, 90s that's often forgotten about, Lamont Murray. Really good score from the University of California, if I recall. Uh, but we've got that one pulled up. This card last sold uh, in June of this year and then just sold recently in July of this year, 12.6. This is me right here setting records, of course, as usual. Um, I am uh, n notorious for, unfortunately, setting records on cards. Uh, hopefully, I won't feel like an idiot and this card will go over the price that I just paid for the card in July. But that was me right here at 12600 Let's see where this one finishes up. Big men on court, Z Pete. You know, the key here is to make sure enough eyes get on this and make sure it's a real one. Hopefully, it's been vetted. I know that Golden already had one item that was listed. It was a uh, <laughs> it was a big one. It was probably the biggest item in the entire auction, if I had to guess. It was the 1997 uh, Championship PMG in a BGS 9.5 holder. Uh, Beckett actually graded it. Um, a couple of my uh, more astute Jordan collector friends uh, acknowledged that they thought the card was fake. It has since been removed uh, from the listed Jordan items in the auction. So my um, you know, presumption is that somebody alerted Ken Golden and the Golden auction team and they immediately took the card off there. But uh, just another word to, the, to, the, to those out there that are interested in bidding on some of these Jordan whales, please do your research. Uh, please have a team of expert Jordan collectors around you. I do um, that I bounce questions off of all the time to verify authenticity. It's scary that Beckett slabbed it in a 9.5 case. I mean, you're talking about an absolutely humongous card and a humongous financial commitment um, that slipped through the cracks and got into this golden auction. But it has since been removed. So, uh, you know, uh, I guess we should give some credit to the golden team for responding so quickly to get it out of the listings. Uh, a big Jordan O. Letterman card. I don't know much about that card. I'm not a big retro guy. I'm not a big college jersey guy. But uh, I can't deny that that's a really cool looking card right there. Uh, another Jordan autograph here. Authentic. Uh, and then an 8 oh, uh, slabbed authentic by PSA with an 8 auto. Um, again, I don't collect autographs. I don't have much to say about these cards. I'm just not an expert on any of them. Uh, but I know they all mean a lot to a lot of different people. It looks to me down here like it's serial numbered out of 50. Uh, from uh, 2006 Upper Deck Chronology. Uh, right next to it is a card that's uh, it's pretty hot lately. This is the 1997 Ultra Ability Superstar die cut card. I think I did an Explore the Card episode on this card. Very rare card. Uh, it is a uh, 9.5 minimum gem. And this card uh, last sold for about 4923 as a BGS 9.5 not long ago. Just a couple weeks ago it looks like. Uh, the PSA 10 copy of this card sells for 17000 There you go right there, as you can see. Um, that one was a card that I was actually chasing in that auction, and I did not get it. If I recall, that was a PWCC Weekly. Yeah, so I thought I was going to snag that card, and it went for way more than I thought it was worth, to be quite honest with you. Uh, the BGS 9.5 is a pop 30, uh, $4,900 for that card. Uh, so just depends on the subgrades and depends on uh, where the bidders take that card. So we'll stay tuned and see. We've got another star card, not a rookie there, BGS9. We've got a card I've never seen. This is a 97 Upper Deck SPX Pro Motion uh, card number PM1. It's a 9.5 copy and it's a pop two card. I know nothing about this card. I plead complete ignorance. Um, if you're a, a, an astute Jordan collector who knows something about this card, please share whatever you do know in the comments below for, uh, for me and for the viewers. Uh, here's a card I'm familiar with. I've got the 9.5. This is a 1998 Fleer Electrifying, a little bit higher pop than most people realize. It's a pop 70 and a PSA 10. It's a pop 156 and a BGS 9.5. Uh, that card's on a downward trend in both copies, uh, both gym copies, gym slabs, because I think people are starting to realize there's a lot of them out there. Uh, but let's see how this one does. Uh, as you can see, here's what it's done over the last year. It's down about 10.48%. Um, but let's see over the last maybe three months what's happened. Yeah, it's still down, you know, down 8%, so 5,100, 4,600. Uh, so let's see where this PSA 10 copy settles at. 
Uh, who knows, but a uh, really beautiful Jordan card for sure. Uh, right next to it, we've got a, a hand serial number 23 out of 23, jersey number, napkin patch, um, but it, is, it appears to be an on-card auto. Uh, it's a BGS 7.5 with a 9 auto. I'm not sure why. As I've said ad nauseum on this channel, I'm not an autograph grade expert, but I know people don't like nines, but again, it's this jersey number 23 out of 23, so double jersey number on that one. Another Jordan chronology autograph here, PSA uh, slabbed authentic with an eight for the auto. Here's a card that uh, that I really like a lot. This is the uh, it's a minimum gem with a nine for edges, but this is the rave review in a BGS 9.5 case. Let's check that card out and see what we've got. Uh, here it is. So that card, uh, card ladder has an estimate of 33,000, okay? It's got a low confidence meter, and that is certainly not correct, and let me tell you why. Uh, the last one sold for 10,000 in 2020, so card ladder's kind of trying to project it based on that. Um, but when they use this grade ratio, it gets a little bit more accurate, and you can see the last PSA 10 sold for 21,000 just a couple months ago. So my guess is this 9.5 would sell for maybe a little over half that. I'm thinking maybe in the uh, 10,000 range, 11,000 range, since it hasn't sold in so long. Uh, it's only a pop nine, so it's half the pop of the PSA 10. Not that that really matters. I think people kind of tend to look at scarcity and pack odds and combined gym population uh, for Jordan cards like this. It's a tough card, no question. Um, this is an interesting one. Let me know in the comments where you think this card's gonna end up at. Um, I, I don't know, I'm probably thinking maybe 10 or 12 or something like that, but uh, but it is you know it is telling that the last one sold for 10,000 way back in 2020, so maybe I'm off, but just looking at this PSA 10 selling for 21, usually the BGS 9.5 is you know, a much smaller factor than, uh, than the PSA 10 sale, so who knows? Let's see where that BGS 9.5 rave review goes. Um, beautiful, beautiful card, fantastic card. Jordan one of a kind, 9.5 here. Uh, Jordan upper deck uh, SE die cut all star right there. This one is serial number 225, however. Uh, die cut, obviously, BGS 9 copy right there. Uh, an Atomic Refractor Bowman's Best Jordan, um, which is you know a great card, <laughs> a fantastic card. It's a true gem. It just seems to maybe it's going to get lost in the shuffle amongst some of these other absolutely uh, eye-popping historical museum pieces that we're looking at. Uh, right next to that is the championship hardware from uh, 97 Metal Universe. Let's see if we can find him. Where is he? There he is right there. Uh, so the last one in 9.5 sold in 2012. How many of you guys watching this channel were collecting in 2012? Um, I wasn't at the time. Uh, I, that was during my decade off, unfortunately. Uh, but I would have loved to have picked up five or six, uh, of, well, there's only six in the world, so I'd love to have picked up a few copies at that price. Um, card Ladder has an estimate of 15, and then Card Ladder has another estimate of 10,000 based on the grade ratio, which is explained in Card Ladder right there. It attempts to estimate the value of a card that hasn't sold in the last year using a recent comp from another grade of the same card. Common sense. Uh, however, the PSA 10 just sold for 21,600. So just like we did with that rave review, we've got to somehow kind of try to figure out a way to work backwards from a very recent PSA 10 sale to uh, what we think the BGS 9.5 is gonna do. So uh, PSA 10 has sold twice in the recent months, very consistently for 21.6 and 21.6. So uh, that, that is a pretty steady standard number right there. So who knows what the 9.5 is gonna do. Card Ladder's got an estimated value of either nine or 15. My guess is it's certainly gonna fall somewhere in that range. Uh, a Jordan autograph uh, black uh, from Upper Deck Black All-Star jersey patch here in a BGS 8.510. Another uh, serial numbered autograph Jordan 8.510 from uh, Upper Deck Century Legends. Here's, uh, you guys know I'm gonna focus primarily on these inserts. I hope that's okay with you guys. Again, I'm not an autograph expert, so uh, all I'm gonna do is read and show pictures when it comes to the autographs. I'm not much help there. I have not much to contribute. Uh, but the Intimidation Nation 9.5 uh, recently sold on July 10th. Um, again, this is me setting records. That's me, 10,200, unfortunately, but I was happy to pay that number. Uh, it's a pop 11 in uh, BGS 9.5. The PSA 10 is a pop 11 as well. So you're talking about 22 combined gems in the world. I'm happy with my 9.5 copy. Um, uh, hopefully this goes for a little bit over the 10,200, so I don't feel like an idiot for buying it for 10,200 a couple months ago. Uh, next, we got another autograph. Um, I'm sorry, we got another 2003 Upper Deck SE die cut Jordan card. This one's hand serial number to 24, uh, and it is autographed. 
So that's that. And then we've got the, uh, the finest refractor embossed. It's called a silver refractor, but it's embossed and it is serial number to 263. And that is in a gem slab. That uh, makes that pretty doggone rare if I recall. Here's the card that always baffles me. The Illuminator, the Illuminator, Luminescence, Luminous, I'm confused, but uh, people have explained it 10 times and I forget like immediately uh, after they explain it, what the hell they were talking about. But man, that's a big time gorgeous looking card right there. Uh, in a 9.5 copy and that's a uh, gem plus right there with 10 centering and 9.5 for all three subs So you're talking about a whale right there the 87 Fleer. I haven't looked this up in a while I wanted to look it up and see what you guys uh, Think about this card. So over the last two years the cards up 60% but over the last year the card is down 25%. Let's see what it's doing over the last three months because it's not a super crazy rare card. About two thirds of the pop of the 86 Rookie Fleer. Um, and so it's down about 13% even over the last three months still. I guess people are still thinking 209 is just too many cards. Uh, I own this card in a 9.5 BGS. I probably would like to have it in a PSA 10. It's just like if I'm gonna spend 14 grand, it's probably not gonna be on a, a base card of any type. Uh, but uh, last one sold for fourteen thousand three hundred. It'll be interesting to see where this one sells uh, in this auction. Pretty good looking card right there for an eighty-seven Fleer. Uh, the Playmakers Theater. Good luck figuring out the value of this card and what it's going to sell for. Super rare Jordan card, serial number to one hundred, but it's in a PSA six. So really going to be tough to comp here. Let's put it this way: the last PSA seven very recently sold for fifty-seven thousand, but the one right before that sold for ninety thousand. So this is a PSA six copy. So presumably it will go less, but you never know with these cards. You just don't know. There's people out there that are gamblers. They'll crack and try to resub. The eight point five just sold for sixty-eight thousand four hundred. I'm guessing this PSA six is going to be somewhere in the fifty to fifty to sixty range, but it just depends. Maybe it goes below fifty. I don't know. It just depends on the market, but I'd say somewhere in that fifty to sixty range. If I had to guess, people do tend to prefer PSA six even over a BGS eight point five. I'm not saying I'm one of those people or that it's a justified, but uh, I know a lot of people just want their card in a PSA slab for that money back guarantee, especially when it comes to a card like this where there's some um, suspicious uh, backdoor slash altered slash fake copies out there. Uh, again, I'm not a crazy expert on this card, but uh, let me know in the comments where you think this PSA 6 will end up. Uh, the 98 Upper Deck Game Jersey with the red patch here and a BGS 9.5. Beautiful card right there with a mixed gem, but it's got two tens. Um, this is the entire set of those Prism Jewel stickers in various grades, BGS and PSA. Uh, pretty cool right here. Uh, I didn't look, but the Jordan's down there. It looks like uh, maybe a BGS 6 or something like that, if I had to guess. Um, I'm not the hugest fan uh, of, of those cards, but they are what they are. and It's a complete set, and there's probably not many of those out there, to be honest with you guys. Uh, take it to .NET PSA 10. This card's been on a downward trend, clearly. As you can see, I got the last year pulled up. It's one of my favorite inside and it's one of the more uh, affordable inserts in PSA 10 it's not that affordable because the last one sold for 13,000 but if you look at where this card went to uh, over $20,000 twice uh, during the uh, 2021 bubble actually that was in late 2021 to be honest with you man that's crazy yeah late 2021 it was still hitting 22,000 all the way back down to 13,800. Uh, looks like one, two, three, four, five consecutive downward sales for this card in a PSA 10 condition. Let's see if that trend stops uh, and this card uh, hits a little bit over 14,000. Let's see, maybe it won't, I don't know, it's tough. It's, it's in here uh, amongst some serious, serious monsters. Uh, the BGS Star 101, let's look this one up because this is a card that's been transacting lately. Uh, as expected after PSA's announcement, this card over the last three months is on the uptick. It's a pop 284, so about the same pop as the 86 Fleer PSA 10. People like to compare those two cards. I'm not sure that's a great comparison, uh, but people like to compare those two cards. The reason it's not a great comparison is because even though the pop is similar, you got to remember there's 8.5s out there, there's 9s out there, now there's PSAs out there there there's three 9.5s but uh there's a lot more better cards in the bgs 8 whereas for the jordan 86 fleer there are none better uh than the psa 10 unless you want to count the you know 
BGS copies or whatever. But uh, anyway, this card, is, sorry, let's go back. And a BGS 8 uh, has been trending upward. The last one took a huge step to 30000 um, You know, the average price of this card over the last 10 sales is 26 My guess is it's going over 26 probably closer to, uh, to 30 It is clearly very different. This card looks very different than the PSA 9 that we saw as the first item that we looked at. As you guys can see, the top to bottom centering is not as good. There's some whitening on the top right and uh, bottom right corners, and the left to right centering is not even remotely in the same ballpark. That being said, it's not supposed to be, right? A BGS 8 is not supposed to compare to a PSA 9. Uh, BGS got it right on the centering. It's 7.5 because it's off top to bottom and left to right, so the card is what it is. Um, it is still an amazing card and there's not that many of them out there considering the demand for this card. Uh, so let's see what it goes for. My guess is somewhere in that 25 to 35 range if I had to guess. Um, here is an exquisite collection, Jordan Triple Patch 9.5, another Jordan Ultimate Collection Autograph 9.59. A PSA 7 Jordan patch autograph from another, another one from Exquisite. Uh, you guys know how popular those Exquisites are. A dual patch auto with a, uh, it looks like there's a hint of another color on this Jordan patch on the left, but this is serial number to five. Uh, Jordan and LeBron on card dual patch autograph from Upper Deck Trilogy Signature. I'm not a big retro guy, but this is the 2006 uh, EX Essential Credentials Future. So this card's numbered to 77, and it is a Gem Plus copy. Beautiful card there. Um, the uncut sheet of uh, the 2011 Fleer Retro Precious Metal Blues. Uh, next to that, we've got the 97 Flair Showcase Legacy Row 1, uh, serial number to 100. I'm lucky enough to own the 97 Flair Showcase Legacy Collection Row 0 in a PSA 10 copy. Uh, if you've watched my channel, you've seen that card, the horizontal version of that. Uh, it, row 0 is a horizontal version. And then we've got the Duel. A lot of people are familiar with this card. This is a really cool card, I've got to admit. It's slab PSA authentic, but the autos are 10s. Dean Smith, Michael Jordan, uh, dual autograph card. It is serial numbered to 25. And uh, right next to that, another dual autograph. Guys, I can't tell you, if you're a dual or a triple autograph collector, man, you are in heaven in this one. There's some really, really big autograph, dual autograph cards. There's some really big single autograph cards, two of them being on your screen right now. Uh, again, I'm just not the guy to talk about them in great detail. Uh, the 98 Skybox Molten Metal Fusion. This is a card that baffles me. I feel like this card... Man, this card may be a little bit overpriced. You rarely hear me say that about a Jordan card. And again, I don't own the card. I'm not bashing the card. I'm just saying it's serial numbered to 250. Um, you know, not an impossible card to go find. I've seen a few of these sell recently um, over the last two years in PSA 9. Was this a PSA 9? Yeah, so this is a PSA 9. So over the last two years, this card sold for forty and $36,000. The PSA 10 goes for... Um, you know, hadn't sold since 2018. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just, you know, the P the 9.5 sold for 40 very recently. So that's going to be your best bet at trying to project what that PSA 9 and this golden auction is going to sell for. Um, so some somewhere slightly below 40, if I had to guess, maybe in the 25, 30, 35 range. I don't know. That's as close as I'm going to get. I'm not going to try to pinpoint it. Um, but uh, somewhere short of where the BGS 9.5 sold, I'm guessing that's where this PSA 9 is going to sell. Uh, we've got a patch autograph Jordan, BGS 810. Another Jordan, this is the exquisite Jordan uh, patch auto, three color patch, really cool card right there. Platinum medallion, serial number to 99, BGS 9.5, uh, mixed gem, pop one. That card's going to do mega damage. People love Platinum Medallions. And when you can say that I've got the Pop 1 gem copy of the Platinum Medallion, uh, now you're talking about some really important people spending some really big money. Uh, Jordan Game Jersey uh, Patch Auto Serial Number to 23. Another Jordan Exquisite Collection Autograph Patch PSA 910. Uh, the Diamond Dimensions in a BGS 9.5 holder. That's not normal. I've got it pulled up right here. Uh, the last two have sold for 30 and 31.2. So uh, this $30,000 sale was not too long ago. Uh, obviously sold by Eric at Buy Nice Cars, one of the best in the business. Uh, great guy. Got a great chance to, to meet Eric at the uh, National. He was uh, sitting at Grant's table, uh, if I recall. 
Um, and uh, just a great guy, really nice guy. So, uh, you know, he's always got his uh, branding on the side of all of his sales listings. So when they appear at Card Ladder, you know Eric sold it. But huge card right there. Uh, that's a card that I probably would have bought at the National if Eric, uh, if I had known, well, Eric didn't have it at the National because he sold it in March. So uh, there you go. So going back to it, um, you know, uh, 52 out of 100, those are hand numbered down there. Uh, this, the denominator is stamped, but the uh, numerator is hand numbered. This one's in black ink. Uh, it's a BGS 9.5 copy uh, minimum gem here, okay? Uh, and then right next to it, we've got an authentic unopened team bag with featuring uh, Jordan on the front. And I'll be honest with you, the left to right centering on this one looks really good. Here, I'm gonna click it just so you guys can agree with me because I'm right on this one. Uh, the centering left to right on this looks really, really good. Really, really good. Much better than that BGS 8 we saw. The top's too thick. Uh, so too much at the top. Uh, it's not perfect centering. It's not going to match. Um, is it a little bit? Yeah, it's a, it looks like it might be a little bit diamond cut with a little bit thinner at the top than the bottom. So a little diamond cut action going there. Uh, again, um, you know, the people that are buying this are probably not cracking that Jordan out and grading it, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they are. Uh, but that's a sealed pack right there. Um, then we've got the Jordan BGS 9.5. This card's been on a wild ride, um, just like the PSA 10. This is a minimum gem copy. I've got one of these in 9.5. I've got one of these in PSA 10. Uh, the 9.5 is not looking like a great investment at the current moment. Uh, I know I looked it up. There it is. Uh, the last one sold for 35,000, but just a couple weeks ago, it sold for 61,000 and 60,000. So uh, buy the card, not the grade. You know, to see a card, you know, vary $26,000 in a couple of weeks period, uh, that just lets you guys know how volatile and how... Uh, you know, subgrade sensitive and how much eye appeal matters on that particular card. Uh, we've got a Jordan Slam Bands PSA 9. I've got this one pulled up, I believe, there it is. Um, so the last one that sold was in 2021 and it was a, a blue authentic altered. Uh, this card's numbered to 100. This card does not show up very often. You can see in 2021, it sold for $20,000 um as a raw copy uh so just a really really rare card out there a lot of my jordan friends are very very high on this card the slam bams um which is serial numbered to 100 it's a pop four in psa 9 uh that card is going to fetch a very large uh number many multiples of tens of thousands of dollars uh the jordan 97 upper deck uh, in a BGS 9.5 case, uh, this is a minimum gem with a nine for edges. That's a pop four in a BGS 9.5. We've got an autograph 3.7 Jordan here. We've got another platinum medallion Jordan in a BGS 9.5 case. So can you imagine that's two platinum medallion Jordans in a 9.5 holder? One's a pop one. The pop on this one can't be much higher than one or two. Uh, I didn't look it up, but uh, I like this one more. This is one of my favorites. I, I uh, own the uh, Jordan Gold Medallion uh, copy, which is beautiful as well. Right next to it, we got an 04 Exquisite Limited Logos Jordan uh, patch autograph. Amazing. All of those patches are just flat out amazing. It's a BGS 9 right there. Uh, two autograph Jordan uh, jersey autos, BGS 9, BGS 9, 10 auto here, no auto grade here. Both of them are hand serial numbered to 23. Um, just, I mean, what can you say? Uh, both of those cards are humongous cards. Uh, humongous cards. The 86 Fleer Wax Box. We just looked at this in a recent PWCC auction that sold, so I'm not going to look again. Then we've got the original Jordan Limited Logos. Now, this one's a huge card, right? We know this one's huge. Um, here it is right there. Serial number to 75 in a 9.5 copy. The cards actually come down 1, 2, 3, you know, down here to 114. The card was 336. Um, not long ago, uh, less than a year ago. Uh, so for it to already come all the way down to 114 is scary. And that's kind of the risk you play when you buy these dang whales, man. Um, you know, moving six figures in a couple of, a uh, couple of months is not unheard of either direction. Uh, so I don't know how those people who bought at 336 feel that the last one sold for 114, but they'll be watching this one right here. Um, you know, is there a chance? I mean, again, every limited logos patch that I see, is crazy looking like this, which is, it's just an awesome card. What an amazing design for 03, uh, 03 limited logos. That's just, God, that is such a good looking card right there. Um, man, that's a good looking card too, uh, a little too steep for me at the moment. 
Uh, and then we've got our, uh, our our PSA 10 Jordan. This one's got an NBA gold. Um, I will be honest, the centering does look pretty good, uh, left to right especially. Uh, let's chart this card, which uh, we look at all the time. Uh, sort of holding steady, somewhere between 200 and 220. It's gotten down as low as 186. It got below 200 twice. Uh, but since then, it's sold above 203 consecutive times, two in a row at 204, the one before that 216. Um, you know, this is a good looking copy. It's got a gold sticker. I wouldn't be surprised for this to do 210 to 220. Um, or maybe it's time for the card to bounce back. I mean, again, it, it is a good looking copy. Let's pull it up again on our screen. Um, it is a good looking copy. I mean, you guys, you guys tell me what you think. Um, that's pretty good looking centering left to right and top to bottom edges look good corners. You know, I'm no expert on, you know, grading, but, uh, I've looked at this card a lot and that's a good looking clean, uh, PSA 10 copy. I'd say somewhere in the 210 to 220 range, uh, or maybe it's time the card bounces back. Who knows? Uh, but that's it, guys. That does it. That's it for the uh, golden. I just want to give you guys a preview. Uh, I had told a good friend of mine that I was going to be on the sidelines and then, Oh, man, I made a mistake of looking and seeing what's in this auction. So, I don't know. There's a couple of the cards in there that I've got empty boxes that I need to check off in my Jordan collection. So, I'm, I'm obviously not going to be able to check all the boxes. There's some serious, serious heat in this auction, fellas. Uh, so, uh, just remember, it starts today, August 25th, Thursday. And the auction uh, extended bidding will begin Saturday night, September 10th. Uh, so that will be hot and heavy. I'll try to do a uh, Golden September Elite Sports Auction recap, and it'll probably be just on the Jordan cards uh, that we just looked at. So those 63 items right there, obviously one of them's a Fleer Wax Box, but, uh, and one of them was a Prism Jewel sticker set. But nevertheless, Jordan uh, would probably be at the heart of the reason that someone would buy either one of those two items as well. So that's why they're included in the Jordan listings. Um, but uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this preview. I love looking at monster cards. I love wishing that I had all of them in my collection. Uh, I will probably try to make a move on one, maybe two of those cards, depending on which direction I head. Um, and just uh, hope for the best. Uh, like I said, I've only bought one card ever from Golden, uh, but I'd be happy to buy another. Uh, any of those 63 would be welcome additions to the collection uh, to put them in my in my vault at PWCC. So uh, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Comment below if there's anything that stood out to you or if you have any independent thoughts or interesting stuff or if I made a mistake or miscalled, you know, called something the wrong thing. I try to whip through these really quick. I'm already at 31 minutes and that's with me talking really fast after a couple of energy drinks. So, uh, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. And you guys know me if you watch my channel. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button. Apparently that helps me with YouTube. I don't know why I need help, but uh, hit the like button if you like my videos. If you guys are subscribers and you're consistent and you're watching all the time, just do me a favor and hit the like button right when the video starts. That would really help me out uh, a lot. And then obviously if you haven't subscribed, I wish you'd consider it. Go check out my playlists. I've got a lot of interesting stuff that kind of uh, canvases the entire basketball card collecting hobby, whether you're a collector or an investor. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate your time and taking time out of your day to listen to me ramble and scream at my screen. Uh, keep collecting. Stay positive in the hobby. Positive, positive, positive in the hobby. And peace.